TNLC family, it's Kristen. I'm coming to you from my backyard. We are staying home and staying safe as I'm sure many of you are. And I just wanted to come and share encouragement with you today. This is a really weird, unexpected season that we have found ourselves in. It's not one that I would have ever dreamed of encountering and I'm sure you feel the same. And um, you know, it's okay to not be okay with it. Um, I feel like I'm supposed to say that to you. Um, it's okay to mourn the brokenness of this season, but I also think God wants us to look for what he's doing in it too, in the good things that are also happening as a result. Um, you know, we weren't made for isolation. We were made for relationship. We were made to be with people. High fives, hugs, togetherness, face-to-face -face interaction was what we were made for. But you know, sin entered the world and things broke. And in the midst of the brokenness though, God does a good work and he does good things and he has good things for us. And so, you know, as I've been praying for you daily, my family's been praying for you, our kids have been praying for you. We really have felt a continued pull by God to fix our eyes on him and our attention on him. And even recently, as I was praying, I really felt like God had showed me the picture of a mountain. And this mountain wasn't a mountain, though. Immediately I knew it wasn't a mountain like, oh, in your faith, move it, God, move this mountain. Not that I'm not, I am definitely praying for this virus to go away. I'm praying for God to do big things. And God loves our big prayers, so don't stop praying those things. But I felt like God was really saying, come up to the mountain with me. I have something for you. And I think we can look at the, the Gospels, which is where he really brought me to, to understand the idea of going up on a mountain with God and what that's supposed to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and read some scripture with us. And I just want to kind of share some of the things that God had laid on my heart as I read it. And hopefully it encourages you as well. The first um, set of scriptures God drew me to was in Luke. And um, in Luke 5, we start to see where Jesus' ministry is really picking up. He's doing a lot of things. He's healing people. He's um, calling the first um, disciples. And, you know, and it says, though, in Luke 6, 12, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer. And when day came, he called his disciples, and he chose them, 12 of them, and then he goes on to say who they are. And so right then and there, Jesus in the, is in the midst of his busiest part of his ministry. You know, he's doing big things. He's answering prayers. There's a lot of needs and a lot of people vying for his attention. And yet he took time to go up to the mountain with God, even though there were needs, even though there were things that needed to be done or that people wanted to see done, you know. Jesus socially distanced and he and he did it voluntarily but I think there's a difference between obviously being forced into socially distancing and choosing to in the way that God designed it but I think we can learn from this season what that is supposed to look like for us and take advantage of this opportunity that we really haven't had I would say at least in my walk with God I have not had this level of opportunity to just spend time with the Lord and hear him speak to me and that's what Jesus did when he went up to the mountain he went and he prayed and prayer is an intimate thing it's where God calls us to share our heart with him and he wants to share his heart with us and speak to us directly now don't get me wrong church discipleship groups all those things are also a vital need in our walk with God but I don't know about you but I would say the one part that I am always struggling and having to push into is hearing from God directly by his Holy Spirit, that still, small, quiet voice that he calls us to listen to. Now, in, you know, the Gospels obviously parallel each other in the story of Jesus' ministry and what he did. And another area that God had pulled me to was in um, Mark 3 and 13, and he says, And he went up to the mountain and called to him whom he desired, and they came to him, and he appointed the twelve disciples. Again, that's talking about when he named the twelve apostles, um, but I love that he says whom he desired. God desires to spend time with us. He really wants us to be with him. And yes, he's going to reveal things that we need to grow and change in, but he just wants to be with us and he wants you to know him and be with him. And I think that's one thing. In America, we're not good at that. We are so busy with other things, vying for our attention, you know, wanting, you know, that seemingly good things, and they can be good things, but even in the midst of good things, Jesus pulled away to be with God. And if he's our example and he needed to do it, certainly we need to do it. I know I need to do it more. And even what I was doing before is not cutting it in this season. I'm having to dig deeper. And it's been really neat. Sometimes we don't know where to start. And God has taken me, honestly, it sounds real cheesy, on quite the treasure hunt. But you know, he what he did was he actually used a lot of the worship songs that we have been singing leading up to this season to really highlight some scriptural 
um, truths and um, revelations that have come through these songs. Like, I'm, you know, we sing, um, oh my gosh, now I can't even think of a song that I'm trying to share, but um, He's Not Done Yet, or um, I'm Surrounded, you know, Surrounded by His Presence. There's so many songs that point to scripture that we should really understand what we're singing, right? You know, we want to know wh why those songs stood out to us. Why is it that um, when I sing this, I move not just emotionally, but by the spirit and God is ministering to me. And I think we can use a tool like that to go deeper. So I'm sure you have a song, you know, or maybe a prayer. You've been praying things and there's certain words you hear yourself saying over and over again, or certain things you hear God saying to you over and over again. Use that as a tool to get in his word and to know him more and to read the truth that backs up what you're hearing from God, that will strengthen your relationship, it will strengthen your faith, um, and it will prepare you for the season that's to come. You know, when I was also reading this, another thing that really stood out to me when I was picking apart these scriptures in Luke 6, and again, in um, that was Mark 3, um, there was a few principles that really stood out to me that I also thought might be a helpful encouragement. <laughs> The first is, again, like I said, in the midst of busyness and ministry doing miracles, Jesus chose to socially distance, to be with God, to be near to him. He knew he had to be continually filled up if he was going to do the will of God and glorify him. You know, and it wasn't small periods of time. It was long periods. It says he prayed all night. Like, that's a long time. Have you prayed 12 hours straight? I know I haven't prayed 12 hours straight. Sorry, that was a bird that just distracted me. Um, he also called his disciples up to join him. You know, in this season, we're home, but we have disciples in our home. I know I have my kids. You know, me and my husband mutually will encourage one another in this time. Um, we have friends and family members that we're reaching out to, we're calling, we're checking on. But those are the opportunities, too, to call them with us. Like when we go up to our mountain, if you will, we can call people into truth, too, and we can speak what we're hearing from God to them and be an encouragement to them. You know, this is not just for us, although I think there is times for just us moments with God. He always wants us to use it for someone else. And then the third thing is he called out leaders. Those 12 apostles were leaders. So he was building leaders in those moments. And I believe God is building leaders now for what's to come. Because, you know, the season we're about to walk in is going to be different. But we're going to be different too. And we need to be ready to help those transition with us into that season. It's going to be... It's going to be a wild ride, but it's going to be a good one. And I'm excited to see how God uses us to, to bring more of his kingdom here through a very unique season of time, through a very interesting time um, that honestly, like seemingly seemed out of place. You know, we even come into a new year and it's like, okay, momentum's building. A lot of us, I think we're bearing fruit in ministry or at our jobs or, you know, having new ideas come out of us and we were ready to do something new. And it's almost like it came to a screeching halt. But I know that God would not allow that if it weren't for something he wants to do in us to prepare us and propel us into a next season. So be encouraged. Keep praying. Keep laying your heart out to God um, and, and see what he speaks to you in those moments and share that with someone else as a testimony. Share his gospel. Share his truth that you're hearing because that is going to help someone else, you know, transition through this season too. You know, and finally, the one other thing that really stood out to me um, was that you know, I think people want to, it's hard to say this, people want to, you think you can only see the good in these situations, but I think, and I don't know if I've touched on it already, but I think you can have moments where you mourn the brokenness, but you see the good at the same time, and that's okay, and I think that's a good, well-rounded perspective God's wanting to have, to carry the burdens of others, to carry your own burdens before the Lord, but then also go, but I'm looking with expectation. I'm fixing my eyes on God and what he wants to do and trusting for his will. You know, and as we're going into Holy Week, there actually is another mountaintop experience that God led me to read about. And that was when Jesus went to the Mount of Olives right before he was betrayed. And I want to read that to us and even share just a quick snippet of that because I think that's appropriate with Easter coming. Um, it says, and he came out, this is sorry, this is Luke 22 starting in 39. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. So again, this is not something he did just once. He went to the Mount of Olives, you know, multiple times. Um, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to this place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away, knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And there appeared to him an angel of heaven, strengthening him, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, 
Um, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow, and he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter in temptation. And I think this could be a great parallel for for what maybe we're even going through now. We can use this as a great example. You know, it says, he, obviously he came up and he prayed, but he said, pray that you don't enter temptation. I think there's still going to be a lot of temptations in this season to be pulled in different directions. Don't get me wrong. House projects are great. Um, what other things? Social media can be a great tool to keep us connected right now, but it can also be a distraction. There's so many other things we could be filling our time with instead of God <laughs> that um, I just, I feel like that cautioning, like don't, don't miss out on these opportunities. Don't get busy with other things, even though God's maybe cleared your schedules in other ways, you know. Um, I love that, again, the disciples came with him. Be an example to those, just like Jesus was an example to his disciples through his entire process. Be okay with being an example and living your life openly for someone else to see how you're doing it. Not that you're doing it perfectly, but they can see Jesus in it, even in your imperfection, as you're sharing truth, as you're sharing your story and letting them watch you live your story. It, it's going to be a good thing. And finally, I love how you can see where he was torn a bit, where it says, you know, the angel, angel strengthened him, but yet he still was he, he, in agony. So he felt the pain of the season, but he was also being strengthened as he was with the Lord. And so I just want to close this in prayer. And then if you have anything that stuck out from, you know, what I shared that encouraged you, share it below. That might encourage someone else. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts as well. But um, Thanks again for tuning in with us here. I hope you're encouraged. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pray to close out. So, Lord God, I thank you, God, that you're, you're good. God, you have good plans for us, God. And even in the midst of a hard season, a broken season, God, you can bring life. You can bring truth, God. God, you can bring justice. You can bring healing, God. You can bring transformation, God. Would you show us, God, what it is in our particular lives right now, God, that you want to use to draw us near, whether it be through prayer, worship, or the word directly, Lord God. Would you continue to grow us closer to you, God, so that we can glorify you in this season and the season to come. In Jesus' name, amen.